thanks everyone for um, joining um, tonight this presentation about um, the School of Computing. Um, thanks for your interest and thanks for taking um, the time out to, to come along. Um, my name is Chris Nugent. Um, I'm the head of School of Computing at Austin University. Um, and I'm joined tonight um, by a, a number of my colleagues, uh, Matthew Edwards, who is currently a year two student um, in the school, and Stuart Osborne, who is a recent graduate from the school and um, is currently in employment um, with Liberty IT. So the, the overview um, and the goal really of tonight, it is a, it is a fairly short um, slot that we have, but I want to take this opportunity to tell you about the school, tell you about the um, undergraduate courses that we have, a little bit about the placement and the graduate um, opportunities, and also to give you the opportunity to hear from some current um, um, students, as Matthew, um, and Matthew's also the president of the Student Computing Society, and uh, he'll touch on that. Um, and also to hear about um, someone who has completed their four years um, of study um, with us within the School of Computing. And as Stephen said, if you have any questions at all, um, you can just drop them in the chat box and we can come to them um, at the end. Um, or I can share my contact details and we can start a dialogue um, outside of tonight's um, session. And you can see at the um, at the bottom of the uh, the slide here, I don't know if you've if you've visited the Jordanstown campus, but that is the School of Computing. I took that picture maybe three weeks ago, um, and it is obviously a very quiet place now um, on on campus, just with our, our current situation. But hopefully, um, at some point, we will have the opportunity to welcome you um, in person to the school and to show you the um, fantastic resources um, that we have and to meet the staff who are involved in the teaching there. So hopefully by um, by the end of tonight's session, you'll have maybe a better idea of what a typical student within the School of Computing um, is like, what type of journey you might have, what type of courses you might be interested um, to study, what sort of industrial contacts um, you um, may make along your way. So I just want to give you a, a bit of an insight into who we are and, and what we do, and then you can hear some honest comments um, from others who are still on that journey journey, and who have recently um, completed the journey. So um, just a little bit then um, about our school. So we have um, at the moment just over 1,000 full-time and part-time students. Um, the main body of our students study undergraduate courses, and I'll come back to those uh, in a moment because I think that's maybe the most interesting point for tonight. So we, we have consolidated a number of courses at undergraduate level, and we have two master courses. Um, in the school, we specialize in two research themes, um, one in artificial intelligence, and a second theme in pervasive computing. And pervasive computing is like um, internet-based internet computing, where we are um, able to connect uh, wireless devices and sensor technologies into um, internet models. And they're, they're the two drivers of our, our research that the majority of our staff uh, are currently involved with. And linked with our research, we have uh, two quite large industrial partnerships, which provide us with an opportunity to take our, our research um, activities and our research results um, into local industry. We've quite a large center um, in the school with British Telecom or BT, the BT Ireland Innovation Center. And we have a connected health innovation center where we work with around um, 30 local companies to stimulate the growth of healthcare technologies in Northern Ireland. And just at the uh, at the top of the slide, I don't know if you can see my pointer moving there, but we have two uh, very exciting international partnerships, one um, with a, a college in Xi'an in China. and We uh, launched a joint college um, in 2019. Um, which means a number of students from China will come and um, join us and undertake some of their studies in second, third, and fourth year. And some of our some of our staff indeed will go to China and, and deliver teaching. And we uh, just this year created a partnership with Hong Kong Space University to um, co-deliver our two master's courses in artificial intelligence and, and the Internet of Things. So quite a quite a, a tight knit structure um, really underpinned by our work in artificial intelligence and internet computing and we can see that the impact of those and both the, the, the flavor of the modules and the currency of, of the topics are reflected in all of the um, teaching activities that we are engaged in. 
So here, here are our undergraduate courses, which I guess is most interest uh, is of most interest for everyone here and tonight. We have four full-time undergraduate courses and one part-time um, course. And I've just dropped the grades in behind um, each of the courses there um, on the slide. So our, our main um, course is our um, computing science course with entry of ABB. And a pathway within that course um, is our software engineering. Um, the two other courses that we have in the school, Computing Technologies, which looks at the domain of, of computer science from more systems view, and BSc Honours Interactive Computing, which is more about um, the design and the human-computer interaction and the UX elements um, of computing. Um, our undergraduate course can be completed uh, in one day, uh, one day a week, and depending on the rate with which you take your modules, it can last from between three and a half to six years. So it really depends on um, what your preferences are if you're interested to um, undertake full-time study. We have a number of courses that you can focus on, or if you prefer flexible study, um, you can um, um, gravitate more towards our part-time offering. Um, and quite a, importantly, I put a logo here of the BCS, the British Computer Society, and we are accredited for all our courses in the school by the BCS. Um, this is really important for us. It's like a, a seal of endorsement. And if you travel anywhere in the UK or in Europe or even greater afield, um, you will be able to um, promote that your, your, your course was accredited by the BCS and, and just provides more of a, a quality assurance metric into your qualification if you come and study with us in the school. So if, if the four uh, main full-time courses don't work out in, in, in terms of your um, um, grades next year, we do have an option of an integrated um, foundation year. Um, this is like a, a year not course. Um, it runs in full-time mode and successful completion of the course would allow you to progress on to year one on the computing science degree. Um, the entry requirements um, for our IFY course are two Cs. And we have had a number of very um, successful stories of students who have come through IFY, completed the undergraduate, um, they attained a, a first class um, in their degree and went on to complete a, a PhD um, with us within the school. So it, it's um, another option and another route um, and just some flexibility that we do offer um, dependent on your um, grades um, next year. In, in terms of the resources, we pride ourselves very much in um, the effort that we um, make towards keeping both our software and our hardware um, up to date. We have 211 workstations um, in the school. Um, at the moment, obviously, the majority of our teaching is, is delivered remotely, and we can provide remote access um, to these um, workstations. We refresh the software every year, and we refresh the hardware every three to four years. And at the bottom, we've got some really cool breakout spaces for our teaching, and this is our uh, living lab for UXUI um, interactive study. So some very, very nice resources to support our, our teaching, and um, obviously the, the computing hardware and, and software. So in, in terms of our, our of our course structure, um, these are the years, uh, year one, year two, three, four. These are full-time courses. And um, on the right-hand side, this is our BSc Honours Computing System, which is part-time. So what we can see um, on this slide is that our year one is common. So all of our students who are entering year one um, next week um, in the school will all take um, the same modules. And then in year two, we'll go down different pathways depending on which degree option um, that they've chosen. In year three, um, all of our students undertake a placement year. So we have a dead member of academic staff and a dedicated member in our admin team to support placement. And we work with you from year one and year two to help um, get you ready, get your CV ready, put you in contact with employers, get you ready for your interviews. Um, and indeed, whenever you're on placement, we stay in close contact to ensure your, your learning experience um, is maximized. And then in year four, we break again into a number of pathways depending on the degree that um, uh, that you have opted for and you can opt to undertake a number of um, specialisms depending on how you want to position yourself whenever you leave and whenever you graduate so here's a, a little bit more detail I, I don't want to go into um, all of the specifics of, of all of the courses but we do have common um, subjects like programming and databases and computer technology and then we offer um, variations and variations in a programming language, Java, 
C sharp, JavaScript, depending on which course and which pathway um, that you would take. Um, and at the bottom, um, we have around 10 to 12 optional modules, which allow you to specialize in your final year. So you may, may wish to specialize in a top topic like data analytics or AI, or you might want to gravitate more towards something like computer vision and mobile development. So we do offer a number of um, different options and different routes to suit everybody's needs and really what your desires would be um, for your um, graduate employment. So I, I want to show a timetable. People always ask me what, what does a timetable look like and what are the expectations um, for contact hours throughout the week. Um, this is a timetable that I've lifted. It was from last year, um, semester two in year one. So the typical contact hours um, for this cohort uh, last year were around 20 hours per week. Um, you can see in the timetable, no classes were scheduled on a Friday. So we do our best to try and um, bunch everything together to be efficient with um, your time and your time that you may be in the university or in front of, of some of the staff in the school for the teaching. Um, and in your timetable as well, we, we do offer a number of other, not really related to your classes, but other opportunities to help you along your way and improve your um, or maximize your, your experience with us. So we offer careers talks, as I mentioned, to, to really get yourself um, up to speed and presentable, um, both for your placement and also for your graduate um, employment. Um, we have drop-in centers that you can go to at any time to help with um, programming queries or anything you have with tutorials or with your assignment or with your major dissertation. Um, and every week we have tech talk from a, a local company in Belfast who come along and talk about some of the cool technology that they're working on and also some of the um, graduate employments that they offer within their company. So in addition to our, our drop-in centre, we, we do try and um, provide a supportive environment to transition you from your um, current studies into studies in higher education. Everybody has a, a dedicated um, studies advisor that you can um, go to at any point in time. All of our courses have a year tutor and all of our courses have a course director. So lots of people um, that you can go to and that you can liaise with at, at any point in time if, if you need to find some um, additional support or um, you want to reach out and um, just uh, raise any issue or, or any comments that, that you might have. Um, some, some statistics, I'm um, sorry to, to put uh, so many numbers on the one slide, but uh, just to show really where we sit nationally um, as a school, um, every year all of the universities across all of the departments and subjects um, ask their final year students to complete a survey called the National Student Survey. And this is a, a real litmus test for the experience that students have um, at university on their course. Um, this year we, we had um, our BSc Computing Science had just over 85% and our BSc Computing Technologies had over 85% of success um, from um, our final years. And the sector average in computing is, is 83. So we were very, very pleased with those um, marks there. Um, a very good indication um, of what it's like to study in the school and um, the narrative that, that the students provided around that was very positive as well. And last year we had, um, uh, well last year, last academic year, and we, we just finished our exam boards a few weeks ago with 209 graduates in the school um, with over 80% of those graduates having a first or a 2-1 in, in 2020. And in terms of our research, we sit or we ranked 21st out of 89 um, of all universities that um, uh, offer the subject of computing within the UK. So we're very happy about um, those um, rankings as well. Obviously in, in 2021, the intake will be on the Belfast campus. Um, very exciting um, initiative for us at the university. And um, we are all looking very much towards the move at the end of this current academic year and to welcome all of our, our new students um, this time next year and to their studies uh, in the centre of Belfast. So we will move from Jordanstown to the centre of Belfast. And just to um, just to finish off um, for, from me now for a second, um, we do um, really strive to uh, maintain and promote industry engagement as much as we possibly can and within our courses. And this happens at a number of, of different levels. We have weekly tech talks, as I've mentioned, excuse me, you have industrial placement, um, which provides your diploma in professional practice. And there's a number of scholarships that are available. Um, internships that you can go on in first year. 
um, over the summer during Easter um, periods, um, just any sort of a break that are, are available. They can be for two or three days to two or three weeks. Um, individual modules are sponsored by our industrial partners. Um, and also we have a number of, of research partnerships um, with, with large organizations like BT, PwC and, and, and Dell. And I've just included some examples. There are some logos you can see in the slide. And also we have great support from um, the civil service in Northern Ireland for um, graduate employment and, and, and also placement opportunities. Um, the stats from the university are that 94% um, of um, Ulster graduates are in placement within um, six months of completion um, of their undergraduate study, which is a, a, a very, very um, positive um, statistic for us. So I'm going to pause just for a second and invite my colleague Matthew Edwards um, to say a few words. Matthew is currently a year two student um, in the School of Computing and is also the chairperson of the Student Computing Society. So what I will do is I'm just going to stop sharing my slides. So Matthew, you should be able to uh, see me now. Yes. Over now. Yeah. And um, yep, you can see that. And I'll hand over to you to say a few words um, to everyone, please. Thank you. Well, hello, I'm Matthew Edwards. I'm a second year computing student who is the chairperson of the Computing Society. So my journey, where, where did I come from? So when I finished school at 18 with four grades, I had all my spots at university declined. I was not sure what I wanted to do. So I was like, had, I was going back and forth to either do renewable engineering, culinary arts or music. But finally, I was able to do further education. I started up by doing a BTEC in engineering. But I found out uh, through doing, and then went on to a BTEC uh, in a little free BTEC engineering, but I found it was, I wasn't creative enough. So I, I dropped out of that and went to uh, culinary arts. But over time, I found it just too much. So I, I, tra I transferred back to engineering again. So, and then I, I thought, no, this is not the right course for me. And then I went back to uh, do uh, a BTEC in IT. So why did I study, when, why did I change for, to computing? So I choose computing because it's such a fast moving industry. You're always learning and once you start learning, it never ends. You think you, uh, you on a day to day basis, your smartphone, TV, whatever, there's code that's running upon that machine. Computing is fundamental to modern life. Any change in improvements you're making could be affecting hundreds of millions of people, even if companies making tools for a different company, you're still making an impact somewhere down the line. So your journey now, you're applying. So when you're applying for your course, you'll be going through which course you do want to study. Why do you want to study this course? What will I get out, for, get out from doing it? You'll be applying for UCAS, picking your five choices. So you need to think about which course will I enjoy? Which future can you see yourself doing? You need to think about how the course is going to be taught, what you will learn from doing the course, and what support is available, and will I get industrial experience? So my first year at Ulster. So during my first year, I enjoyed that supportive environment which Chris was talking about. You get a lot of that support, which is extremely important around that whole, so that whole, whole school. And I joined that practical side of learning where you took your knowledge, you gain from your lectures and you put it in the practicals and the labs. And I also enjoyed the assignments where you put that practical knowledge and put in building something regarding to the module you're doing. Um, so what are good things about the school? So the le extra, as as Chris was saying, the lectures are extremely helpful, and you will uh, guide you through any issue you face. You'll be encouraged to work on the problem you're faced with if you find that solution. So uh, and also including that uh, you'll be getting help with your CV and uh, before you go into do you go to second year because you'll be able to have that bit of awareness of yourself before you go into second year. So including uh, as well as I am the chairperson of prep present as Chris said, uh, you be able to do activities outside your um, uh, uh, course and example, for example, you, you, we hope to do a hackathon th uh, this year uh, as we, uh, we're trying to do organize something like that and then we'll be doing a uh, mode like coding challenge, anything relating to uh, your course you're doing and then you'll be able to apply that to your work environment or your course um, uh, and also, um, we, we hope to do and um, bring in more people from the industry to like do talks and or stuff like that. So, if any questions you would like to ask at the end, please please ask me. Thank you, Matthew. Um, thanks very much for that. I think um, just as we have 
uh, managed in our, in our other webinars. We'll take the questions at the very end, if that's okay. So I'll yep. invite um, Stuart to, I don't know, um, Stuart, are you going to share any slides or are you just going to talk to us tonight? But um, I'll pass over to you to give us a little bit of um, an overview of your experience of being a student in the school and um, just tell us about your, your journey with um, Liberty and um, I guess what opportunities uh, Liberty offers to you now and, and how your time at the school has, has kind of set you up for that. Yeah, no worries. So I wasn't as smart as uh, as Matthew there to think about putting slides together. So I just stick up my face anyway, so you can put a name to the face and all that. Um, so just as a brief introduction, my name is Joe Osborne. I'm from Ballymena, and the course that I completed at Violet University was computing science. And just now working in Liberty IT, uh, my role is as an associate software engineer. So I'm actually getting to be involved with not just as you might think, because whenever you hear a oh, software engineer, that means you're just typing away all day and possibly not being that fun. Um, like we're getting everything from chatting away to our American colleagues, chatting to the business people, chatting to our stakeholders, um, getting to actually make changes for the better. Um, my team, for example, we work on customer communication. So that's everything that's outbound emails, texts, letters that all get sent out to you. So maybe a couple of you um, are driving at the minute um, and then you're going and having to get car insurance policies and stuff, um, or maybe that's still to come. Um, that would be the communication that we would be sending out to you. And it's not that we're typing that ourselves, we're building the platform for our adjusters in America to actually write that up and send that out to each individual customer. Um, so just how I kind of got into computing, um, it kind of just came from the fact of, I picked my A-levels um, based on the fact of wanting to be generic enough that I could apply to any course whenever I decided to pick a course. Um, which was maths, physics, ICT, and music. So just I'm noticing questions there from someone there about um, the different qualifications and stuff that you need. Like there's a couple of my friends that were in the course, like they didn't have maths, they didn't have physics. They had different um, A levels that they completed and some of them were B techs as well. And you don't need to do something mathematical or technical like that to be good at this course. You just need to actually be willing to learn. Um, Matthew mentioned there about soft skills, transferable skills, like it's all there. Like one of the principal engineers, the top level engineer in our team, um, he came from an economics degree and then did a master's in TIT. So you don't need to be coming thinking you're walking into this degree, you better know programming. I knew none of it. Um, I'll be totally honest and I walked in half Cloutus, but it was just a case of sitting down and giving it a go. Um, you saw a couple of pictures there in Chris's slides um, of a mentor walking around the room at the time of someone doing one of their programming assignments or whatever. Um, you have loads of them guys floating around the room who are more than happy you sling the hand up and they will be over to help you out. Um, obviously it'll be slightly different with the online learning, but they're more than happy to help you out and like it was never a case of being turned away for any time you needed that assistance and it guided you and just lifted that slight block to get you on your way. And I learned loads going to those classes. Um, like I'm now working in a job where I'm doing that sort of programming day and daily. I couldn't have told you four or five years ago that that was going to be something I was going to be able to do. Um, one of the things that was mentioned as well there was a placement year that you do. Um, my placement was actually with Liberty IT. You'll see there as well, it was mentioned about the scholarships. There's one of the girls in my team, she's now in as an intern. Um, she came from the scholarship and then is now an intern. And at the end of the year, like I did, um, she'll be getting to interview to come back as an associate, so as a graduate. Um, and I think there was possibly 18 um, interns here and all of them who applied got the job offer. So it was just a case of getting the qualification that we needed and we were back in our job. Like I graduated last July and I was in a job by the end of July. So you saw there the statistic about 95% in the jobs, like it's 100% the case. Um, I really love my placement year and I can say about all of the learnings that I got from it, but one of the first things that was great about it was the fact that you actually earn during that year. 
Um, it's not a case that you're volunteering out of the good of your heart for some company um, to basically do work for them for free. That's not the case. Um, it's a paid internship, a lot of them. And you're getting paid anything from 14, 15,000 up to 18, 19,000. Um, and like that is an incredibly good thing. But also the fact that you're building up relationships with those people in your office, um, you're building up um, those transferable skills. Like, can I say that every single um, programming language I learned in university, I'm using and work at the minute? No, it's never going to be the case, but it's the practical skills that you learn from that general programming language of how to use code that's what's transferable like one of the programming languages i use is called gosu and you can barely google it and find anything about it so it's literally just based on the transferability of understanding one programming language you generally get the gist of all of them um good things about the school that have been mentioned already the library even the university is fantastic if you're just wanting to go in there to have a chat with your mates while you're working through some work fine there's a space for that if you're wanting to go in and just die hard concentrate on some assignment that you've got coming up there's another space for that so like it's got something for everyone the 16 or the block 16 suite that's used incredible like there's no computers that you'd be worried about um every single one of them go in it's doing exactly what you need it's got the software you need and anything it doesn't have go and chat to the lectures and you'll get sorted my relationship with the lecture lectures within the university it was always good um and as a general um year group there was over 200 or so of us and like if we ever had any issues they were quickly addressed you weren't sitting there in limbo wondering um is this ever going to end any of the issues were always addressed really quickly um and just general about um <clears throat> maybe you're worried being like how am i going to be applying to university and starting next year and then two years after that walking into a placement year i'm not ready to do that i do not know how to code i've stressed already don't worry about that that will come and it's just the case of putting the effort in and you will get that out it's the same with even the whole job application process building out your cv um the staff within the university are fantastic with that like they give you all these different um tasks which you may think are just boring and mundane but it gives you that skill um on how to write a cv they will look over your cv for you before you even send it into um an application um like i was really fortunate with mine and one of the first applications i sent in um i got into a job interview those facilities were supplied as well by jordanstown for um learning how to interview and i walked straight into that interview walked straight out of it and a few days later i have my internship already sorted so like you're not going to be sure of resources it's going to be are you willing to put the work in um and i enjoyed my four years without a doubt at university and would thoroughly recommend any of you to go for it even if you currently don't think you're going to be the best at programming you'll be surprised how much you'll learn and it actually catches up on you without you even realizing um, so thank you. And if you have any questions, um, you can see my name there. Feel free to reach out at another stage. But if there's any questions, um, we're away. Okay, sure. That was great. A very, um, a very honest and insightful view um, of, of your journey. So it, it's great to hear um, your experience um, as someone um, just coming through uh, the school and also Matthew, who's someone uh, currently um, in the middle of that journey. So thank you both for um, and taking the time um, to share your experiences um, with us tonight. Um, that was really everything that, that I wanted to say. I think that's given you an overview of the school. It's given you um, an overview of the courses that we have and an honest view of a, from a current student and a, a, a more recent um, graduate. So I'll, Stephen, I know we're, we're kind of tight for time here. I'll pass back to you um, if that's okay. No worries. Uh, thanks for that, Chris, and thanks to Matthew and Stuart as well. So. It's a really useful overview of everything in the school there and the career options. Um, I know there's a lot of information there and we're kind of whizzing through it, but um, this link will be shared. So this talk, you can watch it again. We'll share a link and you can watch it in your own time and feel free to send it on to any friends or show your parents as well. So um, don't worry if you've missed anything there. Um, just looking at the questions coming in, there's um, a few come in to me directly. There's a, um, and the, there's quite a few related to BTECs, Chris, in terms of the BTEC route. Yeah. Um, 
and also link link to that uh, the foundation year that you talked about. Um, is there a link? Is there an entry route through BTAC to the foundation year as well? Okay, okay. They're 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 quite specific um, comments, um, Stephen. What I've just done is I've dropped my email into the chat um, for mm -hmm. everybody to see. So yeah. I can only see some of those. I see a comment from Anonymous Two about a BTEC National and um, 2A levels in MAS and health and social care, for example. So um, uh, we don't have any prerequisite for subjects on um, the, the BTEC, and we do offer a reduction in grade for um, desirable subjects, one of which of those is MAS. So it, it's not, it's, uh, and obviously we have some requirements for the level of attainment in the BTEC itself. So what I would suggest, just in the interest of time, Stephen, is everybody emails me the individual query, so I can only see that one, and I will pick up on those offline with our admissions team just to make sure that we give the right uh, reply, if that's okay. No, no, that's fine. Um, I'll make sure the questions uh, get to Chris as well. If you want to send them through via the study at ulster.ac.uk, that's an option which you'll see in the link that we'll send through after this. Um, there's a couple of general questions that I think were covered anyway um, very well, especially by Matthew and Stuart there in terms of um, delivery. Um, so, yeah, just conscious of time. Um, like I say, you can watch this again. We're also repeating this session tomorrow um, at 7.30. So if any of your friends have missed it or your parents want to watch, you can register on our website, um, ulster.ace.uk. Click on the link and register for tomorrow night's session as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, just firing your questions to us directly then. We'll get those replied to. Um, that really wraps up the session, Chris, unless there's anything else you want to mention before we finish up. No, not at all. Are there are there any general questions, Stephen? Sorry, I can't I can't see any. There must yeah, have been kind of one that came directly to me. Um, I'll take a couple of them really quickly. If you're, yep. yeah, um, there's just one about placement years in general. Um, is it up to the students to find their own placement? No, we, we have a de we have a de two dedicated people in in the school, one academic and one member of the admin team, who work with all the local companies and put all of the opportunities onto an online system. And we make all of those opportunities available to the second year students. So yeah. uh, we, we, we will try and work with everybody in the school to um, um, help you with your, your placement. If, if you can find one yourself, or that's OK. But there are um, lots and lots of opportunities that we will make available and promote from the school's perspective. Yeah, so there, there is support there. Um, the other question was just about assessment. Is it mainly exam based or is there a course? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually the opposite. Uh, two and a half years ago, we moved to 95% um, coursework based assessment that suits the subject of computing much better than exams. So we only have, depending on which of the courses you um, would opt for, maybe only one or two exams in the entire four years. So everything is, is coursework based or continual assessment. And that works out much, 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 much better for us and a more true reflection. I think to assess everybody's ability in, in the individual subjects of computing. Okay. Uh, final one, I, I think you touched on this anyway, is typically how many hours per week? Yeah. Um, um, in, in year um, one, we, we are averaging between 18 to 20 hours per week on the, on the timetable. There's a, a little bit of change now just with the current situation, but um, uh, if, if, if we go back to where we were this time last year, it's between 18 and 20 hours per week. Okay. Uh, so yeah, those are kind of all the general ones. The other ones are quite specific to do with grades. So um, you can get those one ans those answered afterwards. Um, so yes, that, that really wraps things up then. Um, so thank you to everybody for attending this evening and hope you find that useful. And thanks again to, to Chris and Matthew and Stuart. And again, uh, Chris's details are there, so just get in touch um, at any time. So I know it's a difficult time um, in terms of getting a look around campus and um, hopefully we'll, we'll be letting you know as things change in terms of the guidance that we get as to when we're allowed to have people on campus. But obviously the sooner we're allowed to do that, the better. And after Christmas, we will be holding other applicant events that we'll let you know about. Um, so we may or may not be on campus, but again, we'll, we'll keep you up to date with that. But again, um, feel free to get in touch with us at any time throughout the year. Um, whenever you're you're making your choices. So um, is that all from you, Chris? Then. Yep. Yep. That's brilliant. Just again, thanks to um, Matthew and Stuart. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant.
So thanks again, guys, and I'll be in touch um, with the link to this session for watching again. Um, and uh, yeah, hope to speak to you again later on in the year. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.